Hey you guys, this is Jess with Sourceful Journey, back with another video. Uh, so I wanted to focus on this next topic. I'm going through my little book as I showed you guys in the previous video. Um, and it's so funny because I have so many topics written down, but then I find myself adding more to the, the pot, if you will. So I think I added a few more this morning and it's just, it's funny how that all works. Um, so I wanted to really talk about um, this notion as far as the possibility about past lives and just really share my thoughts about it. And I definitely want to hear you guys' thoughts about it because I think it's very telling and it's worth talking about. So uh, yeah, without further ado, let's just go ahead and jump right in. Now, in reference to the idea about uh, past lives, do I think there is some truth behind it? Could it be that even though we have this meat suit on, each and every one of us, <laughs> the meat suit, yes, I said that. Could it be that the spirit within, within each of them has at one point lived in this plane before or in other galaxies or universes before, even getting here into this suit present day on Earth? I think there's some truth behind that, personally. At one point, I did it. I thought it was completely nuts. <clears throat> but again. But yes, I honestly do feel that there is some truth behind it. Years ago, I didn't think so. I thought it was completely uh, insane. Like, how is that even possible? Again, doing this thing called research. <laughs> really taking time out to read, uh, you know, various texts look at various articles online, um, you know, old books, um, looking at, uh, what do they call that? Um, you know, various stories in terms of what one may have experienced um, as far as doing past life regressions, um, not only in terms of adults, but even with the children. That's very telling. I feel like we're at a stage within this time, this time frame, that there's so much out there on the internet in terms of videos, in terms of text, where it's hard to deny there has to be a connection there. 111, as I'm saying this. I think it's safe to say that there's a lot more than what meets the eye. Um, one, two, three, as I'm saying this. We have to understand that not everything that we were taught in school um, is completely accurate. There's some parts that have been altered and cut out. And various uh, institutions, not only school, 144 as I'm saying this, oh, I'm catching the numbers right now. That must mean I need to really speak on this one. Um, we have to look deeper and understand that doing some research can really take you far. You don't have to put too much time into it, but put in enough and be able to put two and two together and realize, like, okay, what's really going on here? And try to get a deeper understanding of why. Like, why was this always hidden from us? Why was a lot of this like not really brought to the forefront? Why did it take people like you and I in our day-to-day, -day, uh, two, two, twos, I just said that a moment ago. Why is it that it takes individuals like us to kind of bring this to the forefront and to really get people to think two, three, four? So I'm saying this, I'm really getting hit with numbers in this part. Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> okay, okay. Whew. Um, so. Yeah, it's just something to think about. So I'm gonna talk about like at least four key areas of why I think that uh, the notion of, you know, past lives is one that's a very valid one. And yeah, without that being the case, um, I think if there was no such thing as like past life regression, things of that nature, how could one truly know or learn more about their own backstory, their own uh, past history? Uh, beyond just the current flesh. 
more so, talk about more so on the internal part, the spiritual side. I'm gonna go ahead and tap into that here right now. Let's go. Mannerisms. <clears throat> so think about it. I'll give you an example. For me, you know, I'm a millennial within my mid-30s, but yet I've always had more of an old school vibe. You know, people always talking about, uh, well, women always talk about, oh, it'd be like Marilyn Monroe or, you know, like a Pam Anderson or, you know, uh, I want to be like a Beyonce. I'm one of those ladies, I'm like, you, you guys could have that, but give me a clear Huxtable any day, okay? I'm that, that girl. Like, I feel like with her, one thing I truly appreciate, and for those who don't know who I'm talking about, Claire Huxtable, she was one of the characters. Her her real name is Felicia Rashad. She's she's amazing. But um, <clears throat> I remember I used to watch this one show called The Cosbys. For some of us who know, you know. Um, another one of my favorites was Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Just gave you that sense of pride watching those shows. Like, you know, especially being a person of color, being African-American. But, um, looking at her and how she just harnessed such a strong energy about her. 111 as I'm saying this, and she did it with poise. She did it with class. Didn't have to do any revealing of the skin, any raunchy talking, any uh, gestures in terms of the body. It was just good, clean entertainment, but she did so in a way where she still was very feminine but she knew how to put down the hammer when it, she needed to, especially when it came to her family. I really appreciated that. Um, my mom, in a lot of ways, embodied that energy. And it's kind of like the same monkey see monkey do. So I followed that, I followed it accordingly. Even when it came to how I interact with people, when it came to how I dress in my day to day, um, I'll, I'll use an example. I'm very, as again, very much old school. So for me, as a woman, those who know me, know me well, uh, in the sense that I choose not to wear slacks. I mean, I, I do, if I, like, like today, I'm not wearing slacks, but I'm wearing like, uh, I should say like athleisure, because I'm actually getting ready to go for a walk once I'm done with this video. But during my day to day, uh, if I'm at work, I'm wearing a skirt. Cause I have to be dressed up anyhow. Um, I tend to wear skirts on my off days, honey. <laughs> Watch out, okay? I dress, I dress up because it makes you feel good it's, as a woman. But at the same time, you tend to get a certain level of respect. It's always a good thing. People know how far to go with you when they see you firsthand, just on how, not only how you carry yourself, but how you dress in terms of your, your physical as well. I remember one incident that happened where I was, I think I was getting ready to go on a train. I was getting ready to go visit some family I haven't seen in a while. I was getting ready to go on a train. And these young kids, <clears throat> I call them young kids because they were way younger than me, obviously, um, had to be in their teens. You know, uh, it was boys and girls. One of the girls, I don't know if she had to be all of like maybe 13 or maybe 13 or 14. I'll give her that, maybe. Like it's kind of hard to tell nowadays with some of them because they're like, I don't, I don't know, they don't look the same like how it was when I was coming up. Like you see them, they look like they're practically adults nowadays. <clears throat> so moving forward, this young lady had on this top. It was a crop top. It was like safety pins holding the top together right in the center, right? Obviously she didn't have on the bra. That was evident. And her entire midsection was showing. And she had on these tight jeans. I'm just like, okay, this generation, my God, like, like, what's going on in the household for that to even happen? Who's allowing their kid to walk out like that? Their teen, if she's a teen, to walk out like that. 111 as I'm saying this. So as we were getting ready to, you know, walk through these doors to get on the train, one of the boys that was with the group rushed over to open the door for me. I gave him a nod and I said, thank you. And, you know, to let him know like, hey, young man, I see you and I appreciate you. I can tell you the number of times I heard boys or well, young kids, I'm sorry. When I say boys, I don't mean like, you know, when I kids, they're, they're preteens, teens, whatever. The number of times I've heard from them, they were like, you'll be surprised the number of times I've, I've held the door for this one girl and they would just give me a look. They won't say thank you or anything. 
I think it's, uh, it's, it goes to say, there needs to be a bit of a balance with that. 155 as I'm saying this, you need to be able to acknowledge it because I mean, the reality is they don't have to, even though I think they should. <laughs> I think people, men should still do that, being chivalrous, but you know, just show appreciation. So, okay, not to lose sight of what I'm getting at here. We all got on the train and there was, of course, several other people too. So one of the young girls was sitting like on the opposite side of me uh, towards the back, like a seat or two back for me. She was like, miss, miss. She's like, you're so pretty, very complimentative. And I was like, oh, thank you. I wasn't even really paying attention because I had my earbuds in, kind of like I have them in now. And uh, you know, I was like, oh, thank you, you know? And she was like, you know, I really like how, um, I forgot the guy's name, but I guess it was one of her, her pals, how he held the door for you like that. She's like, I can never get nobody to do that for me. And as you can imagine, this is where that conversation kicked in. So I had a conversation with her, um, just really helping her to understand why that might be, just based on how she's portraying herself. In order to get respect, you have to give it. But at the same time, you have to carry yourself in a way that people know when you step into that room or into that space, the type of level of respect that you're expecting to obtain if they plan on having any dealings with you. If they see that you are acting a certain way, dressing a certain way, just for attention, what type of message do you think that's sending out to them that are around you? They're going to treat you with the same level of uh, expectation that you're putting out there. It's sad because you could tell, like, I, well, you couldn't tell, but when I was talking with this young lady, I could tell she had no sense of guidance. And that's why I say when it goes back to the household, what are the parents doing? How are you even allowing your little girl to walk out the house like that? It really broke my heart seeing that that, that day. It really broke my heart to see that. And what was funny, because I knew at one point, because I got on the train first before they did, because the young boy opened the door for me to get on, uh, to walk down the, the path to get to the train. But I noticed one thing about this young lady, as she was walking up the aisle past me to get to the seat, she did this little gesture to kind of cover her midsection. Because I guess she felt like I was giving her the side eye, which I guess I probably was, and I wasn't trying to. But it was like, sweetie, what are you doing? 144 as I said that. But when I had that conversation with her, and it was a pretty long train ride because the stop I needed to get off at was like practically towards the end of the line. But I knew she took some nuggets from that conversation. She felt pretty good about it after the fact. And interestingly enough, one of the boys that was a part of that group had a jacket on, he actually gave it to her. So even that little gesture shows that he caught wind of the conversation and felt the need to step in to kind of help her out. I think, and I don't have any children of my own yet, but I know for a fact that I think as those who do have children currently, don't forget about them. Don't forget about the kids when it comes to making sure they understand the do's and don'ts of this world, to make sure that they're protected, but at the same time, make sure they understand in order to get respect, you have to give it. But at the same time, make sure you carry a sense of energy, a sense of, uh, of an image where others know too, when I'm dealing with this person, I better come correct. Maturity. Now, in terms of the maturity aspect of things, um, this could be said in the sense of like being like an old soul. So when it comes to past lives, um, again, early on, I've always had a, a bit of mature soul. <laughs> me being the oldest out of my siblings on my mom's side. Um, remember in a previous video, I did say that for the majority of my existence, I've always known anyone and everyone in terms of my mother's side of the family, not my father's, okay? So I've always felt like I was the, the second mom, being her oldest and only girl. So when it came to looking after my younger siblings, my brothers, you know, um, I stepped in and stepped in quick, learned how to do things like cooking quick. Um, you know, I was one of those kids that was a, what they call a latchkey kid, okay? Those of you guys who know, you know. And 
it's so funny because I'm thinking back at it. A lot of that stuff came with such ease. You know, learning how to cook meals uh, when we got back in from school, making sure we locked the door and stayed quiet, especially if you lived in an apartment building. You don't want people knowing that you were there by yourself because that could get to being a bit messy. So we had to do what we had to do. Um, but with the maturity sense of it, now that I think about it, it's like, wow, I really did learn pretty quick. I think the earliest time that I started um, learning how to cook these meals and things like that, um, thinking back to it, it's like, wow, how did I really know how to do that? <laughs> I was like, wait, wait, how did I even figure that out? But it worked. I got really creative and um, I wouldn't trade those experiences for the world. But I say all this to say the maturity aspect of it, I think, um, says a lot. And in connection to past lives, uh, I think that there is a connection with that because certain things that you kind of know how to do or take on, like where did all that come from? Something to think about. So preferences. Preferences could be a wide array of things in terms of what you like to do hobbies wise, or it could be anything in reference to what you like to do in reference to um, various tasks that you take on. Uh, <clears throat> or it could be even in terms of what you find to be your ideal partner. You know, and this could get into another area too because even with past life regression, you know, you think about those who have a certain uh, sexual orientation, right? Has anyone ever taken time out to think that maybe the reason one may portray themselves one way, which is viewed as opposite of their gender in this lifetime. Could it be because maybe in a past life they were actually in fact that gender? Think about that. I don't feel like I'm the only one that's picking up on it. I don't think that it would be a surprise, especially if you know that there has to be some truth behind past life regression. I think that there, that could, in fact, be a huge reason why some who may be a gender of this magnitude in this line, male or female, may in some way still feel like, oh, I'm more aligned with being the opposite gender. It seems to be like the only logical possible reason for why that may be. So, I'll give you an example, um, but it's not, it's not dealing with, in terms of myself, because I already explained to you guys my, my story with that, um, as far as with my own preference, I prefer men, <laughs> but as far as with other areas, like other tasks or hobbies, as that particular part is what I'm referencing right now, um, I find it that I love anything and everything when it comes to writing. I've always been very good with words. Uh, some would say like a wordsmith. <laughs> I've gotten that too. I'm very good when it comes to speeches. Um, always had a love for it. For some reason, when I get in front of a group of people, it could be hundreds or thousands of people, I feel like mentally, like it's game time or um, it's go time, you know? And uh, it just, it motivates me. I love that, you know, amongst a lot of people and just being able to share various stories or to give various speeches depending on the topic at hand. I remember when I first started getting into it, especially having to do speeches in terms of class, um, being in a class, I remember some of the responses I would get, like towards the end of the speech and, you know, we're leaving out, getting ready to go to our next class. A lot of the students that were in the class would be like, Jessica, that was so good. Oh my gosh, you're so natural with it. And to me, I would think like, was it really that good? <laughs> I was just like, I, I, it's one of those things. Um, my thought process was, I was just more humble about it, you know, because I, I was like, okay, it did good. But I'm like, okay, I'm thinking to myself, I could have done differently in this area or I could have handled this a bit better, you know, things like that. Um, and yet, to hear that feedback, it would put a huge grin on my face and it just lets me know that sometimes <sighs> it helps to not overthink, <laughs> to put it plainly. 
But I say all this to say, when it comes to my story, I know I just find that I have a very strong appreciation, a strong love for words, for speeches, for um, motivational speaking, for consulting, um, you know, really digging deep in terms of the, uh, the intellect, <clears throat> if you will. So what is it for you? Do you think about your purposes when it comes to certain hobbies, certain tasks, or whatever it may be? What is it for you that you find that your heart is drawn to? And do you think that that could have been something that you just recently developed? Or could that have been something from a past life? Think about it. Last but not least, in terms of this notion of the possibility of past life being real, um, what about the notion of deja vu? People throw that phrase around so willy-nilly, <laughs> all willy all willy nilly, as they would say, um, but yet don't really think about the meaning behind it and what it actually all ties to. I can't tell you the number of times that I've encountered this notion of deja vu, whether I've seen something happen in terms of uh, a certain light changing uh, as I was approaching it, or maybe I saw something at work happening, or uh, received a certain call, or. Um, saw something actually taking place that I might have dreamed about before it actually came to fruition, which that too can be tied into me being a seer. That can have a lot to do with it also, now that I think about it. But I remember I was one of those people when I was much younger who say, oh, deja vu. And a lot of times when I notice it, <laughs> I know I'm not the only person that may have done this, but whenever I <clears throat> notice something like that, I would say deja vu really quick just to kind of call it out and see if it changes the, the situation. So if I notice it, I'm like, oh, deja vu, I'll say it real loud or something. And uh, <laughs> I don't know why I did it, but I'm thinking it was going to change the environment or that moment from actually completing any further. Uh, and it wasn't like a bad thing, but uh, I, just, I just did it just, <laughs> just to try to break the situation up, I guess. 144 is I'm saying this. So funny. So, uh, I mean, to kind of get back to the topic here, to be more serious about it, if you will, deja vu. So we throw this phrase around so much, and we have over decades, for, for quite some time ever since this became known. Um, how is it that we can throw that out there and not think that there could be a possible connection to it, and even in terms of past life uh, experiences? You know, um, I think that that's very telling within itself, too. It's a lot to think about when, when it comes to all of this, but uh, it's definitely something worth exploring, so, so why not? Again, my whole take on this is that when it comes to past lives, especially with past life regression, I really think that it is, in fact, something that's real. I think it is something that... Um, you need to learn to embrace and just accept it for what it is. It's beautiful. I think the part that I found to be so intriguing about it, in my own opinion, is when the very videos that are now popping up and have been popping up for years where it shows kids who are able to recount past life experiences that they had, the spiritual side of it, right? So obviously, because you look at them in the physical and see, oh, this is a toddler. Not a toddler, but this is like a, a young kid, like all of four or five that, where they can actually be speaking to you and you can understand what they're saying right and yet they're recounting the experiences they had when they were in the military and somehow a plane crashed and they died in it or they can recount a time where they were on an Indian reservation and somehow they were taken away from their family and then you have people in these different groups who can go and dig 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 to find out more details on it like and actually go doing, uh, do more digging and look into different texts and things and find out, oh my gosh, it looks like we're talking to this particular individual. And you can see the details of what happened to that individual when they died and what was the cause of their death. When we have groups who can make uh, great connections or of connecting the dots in terms of all of this and actually see that, okay, this person 
is the reincarnated version of this individual who passed away in such and such year from a plane crash from being in the military or, you know. I say all that to say, that's not by chance. There has to be a connection to it all. And again, the answer, in my opinion, is that past lives, it's real. As always, I want to know you guys' thoughts about it. When you think about past lives and past life regressions, do you think there's some truth behind it or do you not? If so, why? Why not? Leave your comments in the comment section below or continue sending them to me over on Instagram and the other platforms. Um, again, I love your emails. I think... Some of you guys are choosing emails because your email responses are uh, pretty detailed. So you give me a lot of information in the email and I enjoy reading it, especially when I'm on the go. Um, and being able to respond to you that way too, it's, it's beautiful. So, and I know that I'm reaching out or I'm connecting with people from all walks of life. So I'm connecting with people as young as in their, you know, early 20s. I've had one, I think I spoke to that was 22 recently. But then I know there's some people who are even older than myself, which is even more amazing too. So, hey, just know I see you. Hi, it's good connecting with you all. Um, but to hear your, your stories, it's, it's amazing. Um, but I'm definitely interested to knowing your thoughts about this topic. And as always, you guys, just know that I'm definitely sending you guys love and light. And uh, I will see you in the next video.